Hello everybody, this is Saad and uh, I'm here on Microsoft Channel and Studios and uh, today we're just going to talk about the PowerShell and its support for macOS. Well, PowerShell is now on every computer everywhere. So for that, this is a PowerShell website that I'll be showing you guys that soon. And uh, after that, this is a GitHub link. So what you can do is that, for example, you're using any of the operating system from the Windows 10 to Windows 8.1, Ubuntu 16.4, or Ubuntu 14.04 LTS, and CentOS and Mac and Docker, anything you like. For now, I'm using Mac, so uh, I'll be downloading that for Mac OS. I've already done that. So now PowerShell supports uh, f for Mac as well, which means that uh, we can use the power of PowerShell in Mac as well. So now I would to just start with this. Uh, firstly, you got to install a package. After you have installed a package, simply just go to the terminal. I'll just go here, and there you go. So to just launch PowerShell, what you got to do is that simply just say or just type in. PowerShell and there you go so now the PowerShell is fully active in Mac in my terminal which means I can get access to each and every part of uh, the PowerShell so for example uh, if I demonstrate to you guys that uh, how we can just get the commands and use the very basic commands of PowerShell and then we will talk about the scalers in PowerShell and then uh, we'll also t uh, talk about uh, uh, the, the list and things and arrays uh, as well. But right now, what we're going to do is that we're going to start very slowly. And then we're also going to use uh, Vue3D Code and we'll also see that how Vue3D Code supports PowerShell. So for that, now let's go back to our screen. And there you go. So what I'm going to do now is that let's start with the very basic commands, the three keys of PowerShell that you say. So that is get command. And now there is all the set of commands that is available to us. That it may be the function, that may be a commandlet. So there you go. For example, uh, if I say get uh, Da, 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 get PS drive, there you go, this one, and we can also just try this one. For example, if I just say get PS, PS drive, and there you go. So all of the drives available to me are right there, and uh, I can use each and every command that are available to me, but right now what I'm going to do is that move to another key. So basically, there are three keys in PowerShell that I say. Number one is get processes. For example, you want to know more about the processes which are going on. You want to kill the processes. You want to get the processes and do all the stuff with that. With that, if I just move next, that is to get command lists. So you need to learn more about the command list there and what kind of command lists are available uh, using the Mac. Whereas uh, if you talk about uh, the PS drive, so I would say you have to just uh, uh, and, and simpler words you work with the file system and you need to know what kind of f uh, drives are there in your computer that might be a Mac, that might be a Linux uh, or running Ubuntu or maybe any of the operating system or might be a Docker instance running. So you need to learn more about the drive there and uh, this is the with the get ps drive which means that these are the basic three keys that you need to learn as a very beginner and uh, now we'll just move back to the screen and there you go so after doing this i will just simply move to uh, the vl studio code to launch vl studio code i would simply say vs code and there you go so i've launched the vs code uh, so firstly, what you got to do is that you got to just make a folder on your desktop or maybe any of the location. VS Code, what it does is that it just uh, gets the, look, uh, the folder in that. And now what I can do is I can simply create the files. But before that, I have the instance of PowerShell with me um, in my Mac, which means that uh, I can get access to PowerShell using the terminal. But for example, if I just want to just get access to the PowerShell here, get the IntelliSense and all the complete uh, experience of development that I get in Windows. So how do I get it here? 
So simply, I would say, just go to the extensions and just type in PowerShell. And what you get here is the PowerShell extension. I've already installed that, so I won't be doing that again. And uh, now what I would simply go is that, uh, there you go, and it would simply create a new file. So for simplicity, I would tell that the PowerShell files are with .ps1. So I would simply create a file that is hello.ps1, and there you go. So for example, if we just type in here, get dash. So there you go. So all of the intelligences right now available to me out of the box in the Visual Studio Code. And uh, by using this, I can just even simply click on the exclamation mark here. If you guys can see this, there you go. So there is an exclamation mark. I can simply click over this. And uh, the very basic help and how I can use that, that is available to me. Whereas uh, I would simply zoom out and say get dash process. And now I would run this. To run this, what I got to do is that I would simply move to the debug tab. So after going to the debug tab, uh, there it asked me that, uh, okay, you can start debugging here. And uh, if I just simply click on this, it says, tell me which environment you want to use to just run PowerShell. I would say, obviously, PowerShell. And there you go. And now what I get to do is that I would simply select the file, hello.ps1, go to the debug tab, and hit start. And there you go, in the debug console, there it is. I'm able to see all of the processes that I just got there in terminal as well, which means that debug console worked really amazingly. And I'm able to get all of the processes, which means that I can do all of the stuff using Visual Studio Code. And I'm having that amazing experience that I have in Windows and Mac. So right now, what I'm going to do is that simply just create a few variables. For example, let's say name. And maybe a number. Let's say three for the good reasons. And that'd be okay. I would simply mark a breakpoint here and just click on the debug tab there and there you go so now uh, in the autos i'm able to see the variable name and uh, the value assigned to that is my name okay and i would simply just stop here just write another command cache process there you go again a breakpoint here and name is there so for example, I just simply want to step over, click here, and there you go. You have two variables now. And uh, like this, you can create as much variables as you can. But the good thing about this is the complete debugging experience is available. You can step over. You can uh, simply just step into that or maybe step out of that uh, line. And the amazing debugging experience that uh, we have on Windows is also available using Visual Studio Code. And uh, Visual Studio Code is available across uh, different uh, platforms as well, which means that it's available on Windows, on Ubuntu as well, and on uh, Mac OS as well. So next, what I'm going to do is that we are just going to play simply with some uh, collections. So these are the scalars. And now I'll simply move to the collections. For collections, what I would simply do is that, let's say, names. And there you go. And maybe something else, channel line. And for that, we just create a collection of numbers as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten. 
boom. And uh, now I would simply make mark a breakpoint here, run this, and there you go. So the amazing thing here is in, in the autos, you'd be able to see the names, and in names you'd be having at zero place, at one, at two, and at three. You also have the length, the rank, and all of the, the variables there that are available for you. And for example, if I just simply step over, I'll be able to see numbers as well. So you're able to see that on zero's place, there's one, on fifth place, there's six, and on ninth place, there's 10. Okay. So this is how you work with the collections and the scalars. And for example, I just want to loop into one of the collections. So how I do that? So for each, and there you go. The snippet is available, which means that the basic snippets of uh, PowerShell are all available out of the box in Wheel Studio Code. And if I just simply click on this, and it says item in collection, just got to name that collection. For example, that one is numbers. And simply, I want to print that number. So I would say item. And let's run this. Step over. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is how you loop into that. You get all the processes as well, and there you go. So in debug console, you're able to see the result. So I loop into that, and uh, this was a very brief introduction about uh, the PowerShell and Mac and the how uh, PowerShell is supported in uh, Mac OS. And for example, if you want to just uh, learn more about PowerShell, you can just go and check it out my series on channel nine that's available. And uh, that is all for the beginners as well as the intermediate as well. And uh, one of my series that is going to be launched soon for the experts of PowerShell. And uh, for now, uh, I'm really satisfied with what, what Microsoft has done with the PowerShell and its support for MacBook. Like uh, the complete intelligence available with Wheel 3D Code and Wheel 3D Code being and working as an amazing IDE, whereas uh, its availability is quite amazing. And uh, when you talk about setting up the things for PowerShell, it's not that much difficult that you imagine or you just uh, Think that it might be difficult or maybe something that uh, it would be something really crazy stuff to do. But no, not exactly. It's really easy to set up and you just got to do very simple things like install the PowerShell from GitHub and then install the Wheel 3D code and uh, just get started with the things. And the last thing and the most important thing that you got to do is that don't forget to install the extension in Wheel 3D Code so that you get all the complete intelligence and all the debugging experience that I had and the code snippets as well. And for now, that's all for today's video. And thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time.